Let's head on over to router two and try our telnet. We should be able to telnet from here anytime we darn well choose because there's no time range on this line and we can. No problem at all. We tone it in, I'll log out, and we're done. Go over to three. And refused by remote host, which is exactly what we saw when it was denied by the explicit deny in the previous attempt. Let's go over to one and run a show IP access list. And we see two matches for the one telnet that did go through. <clears throat> and notice that the match for router three trying to telnet in, that's going to be on the deny IP any any because line 15 wasn't even read because we know that one is currently inactive. So we need to change that. And to test that, to change the system clock, I'm going to use a command that you're not going to use very often, period, uh, outside of lab environments, and that's clock set. It's a way to set the system clock manually. And you actually do that from the enable prompt. And uh, let's see, we're going to go, we need a time, let's go with uh, 1500 hours. It's 3 p.m., and it, the router will know. We'll put November 2nd, 2016. And now we will run show time range after that clock update message. And I'll run it again here. And you can see now the time range is listed as active. Good stuff. So now router three should be able to tone it in because the router thinks it's three o'clock in the afternoon on a weekday because we just told it that it was. So let's head over to router three now and give that a shot. Don't need to show anything, we need to tell that. And finally, Router 3 is able to get through and log in with no problems at all. And we go back over to Router 1. Should see that increment. On line 15, and we do, we see the two matches, which we're used to seeing now when there's a good Telnet connection. So you can see how powerful time ranges are. I mean, they are fantastic because, again, you're going to run into more real-world situations than you'd think where you just want a line or two or three in an ACL to be enforced some of the time, but not all of the time. Now, let's take a look at that absolute option here. I want to show you that. And we're going to write a time range and call it example. And we've seen periodic in action. We know the deal there, but this absolute can also come in handy. And you'll notice here it's asking immediately for a starting time and a date, or I can, I can begin the command with an ending time and a date. And you might think that's kind of odd. It's like, well, why can I start the command with the ending time? Because while sometimes you'll put a start and an end time, Sometimes you might just put a starting time, and then other times you might just put an ending time. So here are the rules for the absolute time range. If you put in a starting time and date, then the line will become active, obviously, at that starting time, and it will go on forever, forever, forever. Really, it'll go on forever. We couldn't afford a good echo. But it will go on forever until you take the line out. Now, if you choose to put in only an ending time and date, then the line takes effect immediately and it will run until that ending time and date. So you can see where that comes in handy. Maybe you want an ACL to run through, you know, this time tomorrow, et cetera. You could just put an ending time and date uh, and it would start again running immediately and then end at the time and date that you specified. So let's go ahead and just have a look at the syntax here. We're not going to write one to apply, but I do want you to see it. And it's going to ask you for a starting time and you could say 1000 hours. And then it's going to ask you for a day of the month. So if you wanted to start this one on November 3rd, I like that it says Jan for January, Jun for June, that kind of thing. I appreciate hints like that. And 2016. And notice that I do have the option now to put in the ending time and date, or I can just go with this command. So with this absolute start, etc., whatever line we've got here, would start at 10 a.m. on November 3rd, 2016, and it would go on until we took it out. And if we specified only an ending time, just run that by you one more time, then it'll start immediately and then end at the time specified. I think I mentioned that so often because it just throws people. Through me the first time I saw it, it's like, well, why can't I just put an ending time in? That's why. So with all of this in mind with time ranges, before we move on to a little bit more of ACL work, you can see the importance of synchronized time throughout a network. And there are other reasons that we have to have that, 
But if one of your, you know, if you're setting these up, and let's say that you have them on multiple routers and you want them to run at the same time, but if their clocks are different, then obviously the ACL lines are going to be inactive when you think they should be active and vice versa. So it is so beyond important to have synchronized time among your routers. And we're going to work with something in the next section called the Network Time Protocol. And that is going to help you make sure that your time is, first off, that you're getting time from a good source, from an authenticated source even perhaps. And then the routers throughout your network can share the time and they will sync up. Before we get to that, though, a little more ACL action, including a placement lab, and even maybe a little bit more with sequence numbers. Just want to go over that material with you one more time, and that is all coming up next.